This episode of the Smart Aviator podcast is brought to you by Avenco Insurance Company. Real people, real answers. Call 800-822-9123 for a quote. Yeah, welcome to another episode of the Smart Aviator Podcast, hosted by Ab Brief. And, you know, all attention has been on the Beach King Air pilots who rode an autonomous landing down in Colorado recently after a pressurization failure at altitude. Uh, but the way I see it, it might not have been as a successful outcome if it wasn't for the good work of the uh, installer that's blackhawk aerospace and that was a shop that installed the garmin emergency auto land auto throttles and the g1000 suite in this older king air i'm with conrad uh Thiessen at blackhawk and conrad blackhawk is well respected for its uh, performance engine upgrades on uh, turbo props but your company also does a lot more than just engine upgrades. You've done a lot of refurbs and all kinds of avionics work to some of these older turboprops. Now, this aircraft uh, was a, what, 1980s vintage King Air that came into the shop? Uh, how long yeah. ago? Yeah, it was a, it was a early 80s vintage uh, King Air 200. Um, and it was, uh, it was actually from a, a broker, a Pollard Aviation. Um, that uh, has elected to do the G1000 um, auto throttle, auto land, uh, at, and, and go out and market and sell those airplanes. So it's a great partnership with them as well. But uh, yeah, this this one came in. Um, it was a vintage cockpit, if you will. Um, we, we installed the Garmin G1000, um, the uh, the Platinum package, as they call it, which is basically synthetic vision, Jepson charts, and a flight stream 510. Uh, we did the surface watch, uh, new radio altimeter, um, and then we did the, uh, the the auto throttle, auto land. Um, and uh, this was the first one that was done after Garmin certified the platform on the 200. So uh, this this was the first one after market. Uh, and, and again, um, our shop in uh, Columbia, Missouri, um, that's where our first MRO uh, is at. We've been doing these for several years. Um, there's a lot of uh, um, older, uh, I guess more antiquated uh, wire and relay switching uh, for landing gear flaps, props, the, the starters. There, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of airframe um, uh, interface that that needs to be switched out to support the, the auto throttles, the, the auto land system. Yeah, yeah, that's sort of what I want to talk about here, I think, because uh, a lot of people don't really understand or maybe even appreciate the amount of airframe work that goes into a auto land, auto throttle interface. So uh, Garmin G1000 aside, we, we know, you know, these, these installations have been uh, very successful in the King Air uh, market for a lot of years. I sort of lost count at nearly 1,000 of these things retrofitted over the years. But when we start talking about uh, the latest auto throttle with Autoland software, talk me through the, a, the um, airframe interface. I'm talking landing gear, I'm talking wing flaps, uh, and even the auto throttle side of it from a nuts and bolts and electrical standpoint out on the shop floor. Uh, how does the interface look? Uh, yeah, so so the... Uh the, well, the prerequisite, I guess, uh, if you want to call it that, to, to auto land is obviously the auto throttle. You got to have that before we can do auto land. Sure. Um, or, uh, but there are a couple servos that get mounted back behind the pedestal in the pedestal area. Uh, that that's where uh, the the power levers are driven with the auto throttle. Um, most of that is done background with the Garmin G1000. Um, the auto throttle side of it is is not as invasive if you will i mean it, it, like i said it's a few uh it, it's a few servos um that, that are installed back behind the pedestal and then just a lot of wiring interface after that um the auto land is is where the complexity comes into play um again there's a if you can picture uh, a, a series of, of relays 
um, that uh, that will switch out to landing gear logic, flap logic, um, you know, starters, props. Uh, there's there's just a lot of logic that has to be relay switched out uh, back and forth through Garmin and just standard interface with the airplane. Um, you know, I, I've told a lot of the technicians here that. Uh, if this airplane's lucky and, and everyone in there knock on wood, that uh, it'll sit in the standard configuration and never go into an auto throttle unless it's, or excuse me, auto land unless it's um, tested. Um, but uh, you know that's that's one thing I really do want to speak to with uh, with Garmin, um, how detailed uh, their um, checkout procedures are. Uh, one of the unique things with auto land is. We can't go out and test that after we install that system. Um, you know, everything else with Garmin G1000 and that entire upgrade package, we will take the airplane out and we'll go do a thorough test flight with the airplane. Um, the auto land, we're, we're not allowed to push that button and uh, and show uh, the the pilot, the owner, whomever's you know doing the flights with us that or test flights with us. That that system works. It's it's a uh, it's a trust factor. Huh. Um, so so this what just occurred um, in out in Colorado is is a, is a very huge success story. One, um, but it it's uh, it goes to show that the the thorough testing and ground testing that you do after the upgrade um, that you trust that 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 system does work and uh, it, it is proven. Yeah, uh, so let's talk about an automatic activation. And I haven't looked through the flight manual supplement for a, a auto throttle, auto land um, install, but what guidance, you know, you talk about, you know, the, the pilot never pushes that button uh, until they have to, but what guidance does, does Garmin offer in a flight manual supplement for normal and, and abnormal procedures when it comes to an activation? Really, there's uh, there, there's four ways that the system can or or will activate. Um, one is you go push the button, the auto land button, acknowledge it, um, and it will go into full uh, autonomous landing phase. Uh, basically, blank out the screens, and and it'll just put messages up there that we're, it's going into an autonomous landing, and it, it takes over, does all the callouts, makes all the emergency calls. Um, decides what airport it's going to land at, and, and it does its thing. Um, there, uh, there's also uh, emergency descent mode (EDM) we call it. Um, that arms at 20,000 feet, and uh, if you get a uh, um, any sort of uh, rapid decompression, it will actually go into a mode where it'll it'll take you down below 12.5. Which is, um, which is what we think, uh, and we don't know all the details yet. It's just a couple of days into this. We kind of think that's what happened in this, in this instance. Yeah, that's, that's what, uh, you know, we're reading and hearing out there, but uh, yeah. you know, we just don't have any data or information on that or anything. Yeah, what kind, of, what kind of descent rate? So if you're at uh, 250 uh, and there's a rapid uh, decompression, EDM kicks in, and uh, what kind of descent mode does it put the airplane in? I don't know that uh, exactly what that is, uh, to okay. be quite honest with you, but uh, it, it does go into the emergency descent mode and takes you down into safe altitude. So. Yeah, okay, and at that point, the system, the auto land isn't, isn't activated. The emergency Correct. descent mode is. So uh, auto land is not, has not been activated yet in, in an automatic uh, the first stages of an automatic uh, activation. Correct. It'll it'll then go into ask you if you want to uh, um, continue on, or you have to acknowledge the fact if you want to go into the uh, um, auto land um, function, if you will. Okay. So, and then um, the the last uh, the 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 last way it'll go into an auto land mode is if there is no interaction with the cockpit for 20 minutes, um, it'll actually ask you or, uh, if you're okay or you'll have to acknowledge the fact that I'm, everything's all right up here. Um, it'll do that in three different phases. If it, if you do not, if it does not get any interaction from the crew, then it'll automatically go into auto land mode. Okay. 
and at any point you can deactivate the system. So if the if the auto land is engaged either on its own or by the pilot, you could disengage it. That is correct. Yep, in any mode you can disengage uh, auto, the auto land system. Yeah, autopilot disconnect button. I I assume. Yes, autopilot disconnect, and there's also some uh, features that it'll ask you um, on the displays as well. Um, what happens from a communication standpoint when an auto land is activated? Basically, the uh, Garmin will take over. Um, as, as you said, it'll squawk 7700, um, and then it will make call-outs. Uh, it'll, it'll select the airport. Um, it'll auto-tune the comm frequencies. Um, and it'll it'll make transmission call out end number. Uh, it'll call out the end number. It'll call out what air what uh, air uh, runway it's going to be landing on. Get kind of given that uh, and then time. Um, as, as far as you know, it'll give a time when it's going to be on the runway, and then uh, it'll do that call out a couple more times as it uh, as it gets closer to the airport. Yeah. Uh, shut the engines down once it makes a successful landing. Uh, some of the auto land demos I've been on, I've, I've seen the engine shut down. Uh, will it happen on the King Air? Will it actually pull a, pull the throttles back? Yep, yep, it'll uh, yep, and it'll shut the engines off um, and and sit basically, you know, wherever it lands, middle of the runway or whatever, wherever it stops, it'll shut the engines off, and uh, from there, it's just wait waits for emergency personnel to. To, to come rescue the crew and, and uh, personnel that are on the airplane. Yeah. Uh, I know you said you, you can't really test it in the real world once you get these done, but what kind of testing do you do uh, afterwards uh, to, you know, because I know there's landing gear, there's wing flaps, there's, there's lots of airframe interface. How do you do it, final check of these things? So, so basically put the airplane on jacks. Okay. Um, and uh, again, going back uh, to Garmin, um, Garmin has and always does and continues to have very detailed uh, checklists. Um, there, there, there is a very, very stringent series of checkout procedures that are required to be done for the Autoland system. Um, so, so basically, you, you'll go test all the manual inputs. You know, run the gear, run the flaps. Obviously, when you get out, start the engines. Um, you know all the different uh, airframe controls. You'll you'll retest them after you run them through a bank of relays, uh, and then Garmin. Obviously, when you're on jacks, uh, will go into their. There's a test mode and a test feature, and it'll run through all the IOs and series of tests uh, from the Garmin side as well, and do all those control features. Um, and and it's 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 a very rigid, detailed uh, line item by line item checklist that you go through uh, detailed checks to ensure that this is a uh, operating uh, auto auto land system. Yeah. Uh, last, I might add that uh, my sense is that it's a still pretty brisk market for uh, these upgrades on these uh, aging fleet of King Air uh, models. Uh, it's a workhorse. Uh, folks love these airplanes for a lot of good reasons. Um, what are you seeing in the market? Um, uh, is there still a lot of demand for major uh, upgrades, including the G1000 and the Kinger? Yeah, the, the, the market is, is very strong on, on the Kinger side. Um, you know, Garmin has a 20-year uh, roadmap for the Garmin G1000 for those Kingers. Um, you know, now on the King Air uh, 350s, you can get domestic CPDLC. Yeah, uh, that, that's becoming more prevalent uh, in the states. Uh, but but they have a roadmap and have have shown and proven that for the last 15 years, uh, doing these G1000 suites, uh, they, they continue to enhance the suite. They continue to add uh, added features. Um, and again, the Auto Throttle Auto Land is a game changer in this industry. Um, the King Air just has such a, a good hull value. Um, owner operators love the airplane, and uh, it just makes sense to to put that newer uh, avionics in, in that King Air and uh, give it that increased added value. Yeah, yeah. Before I turn you loose, you know you you've been doing this as long as I have. You know the market pretty well. Uh, what does this recent Autoland activation mean? Uh, to future upgrades, uh, it's already 
you know, been a pretty convincing upgrade, I think, the G1000 NXI, which is required for the auto land, auto throttle. But uh, do you think this uh, solidifies the the uh, the buying decision even even more? Yeah, absolutely. I I, I definitely think um, it it uh, it has helped, um, especially uh, especially the ones that uh, um, I guess on that proverbial fence post. You know, do we need it or, or do we not? And well, yeah. You know, as you're as you're talking, I was kind of thinking that. You know, my thought has always been, and you know, I had a chance to fly a. 200 Delo at what Garb a couple years ago. It's like this is this airplane seems the most unlikely airplane for an auto land activation. And here we are, the 200 King Ear is the first save. So, uh, kind of blew my theory <laughs> down. But, um, so you, you think it, it, uh, what might help the buying decision? Yeah, you know, and, and I can tell you the last few days, a um, lot of phone calls, uh, a lot of text messages, emails asking about it. Um, and, and I do kind of joke about this, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of owner operators uh, that, that do fly the King Ears. Yeah. Um, and, and the wives, you know, as, as people get a little bit older, the wives are very appreciative of this uh, auto, auto land feature yeah. and this success story um, that just happened. Um, just just puts more trust in that system. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, the other thing that uh, I then, uh, you know, insurance companies, um, you're protecting the whole value of an airplane, too, with this uh, with this auto land system. I mean, whole value aside, but the lives on the airplane and, and uh, you know, especially a lot of these owner operators fly their families around. Um, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a priceless, it's a priceless yeah. upgrade. It truly is. Yeah. Conrad Tyson, Black Hawk Aerospace. Uh, Conrad, I appreciate your uh, effort and uh, your good work you're doing out there in the, uh, in the industry. You've been watching the Smart Aviator podcast. I'm Larry Anglesano. Thanks for watching. 